What's up everybody? Just finished six summer here. Um, this is Saturday after the event. I'm gonna make a series of videos of basically what I learned, uh, what I would do differently. Uh, this is my first drag and drive event and the car successfully made it. Uh, not issue free, but relatively issue free. Um, this video we're gonna go over uh, what I would do differently on the trailer, uh, what I liked and what I didn't. Uh, we'll probably go over stuff that I packed what I used, what I didn't use in a different video, and then just an overall recap here. So first of all, this trailer was just a generic Harbor Freight one. But what I ended up doing is I got a bunch of steel angle iron, um, welded a new frame, and then uh, basically made wheel mounts, hood mount, uh, some other stuff, deck lid. Um, worked out pretty good. Um, not, uh, not perfect, but... Uh, We'll go over some of the features here. So one of the first things that uh, I think was kind of a lifesaver was this uh, hood mount. So I have a flat um, hardwood hood on the car that's a pin-on style. So we um, made these rails so essentially the hood could mount to the top um, for the driving portion. We did do uh, Byron to the first checkpoint with the hood on because um, it was raining. but. I took it off after that just for the fact of trying to keep the um, underhood temps down. Not just uh, coolant temp, but component temps as well, because obviously with towing, it could generate lots of heat. Moving to the front here, um, there's a little rack that we had for two fuel jugs. Um, we were on pump E85 in the car, and while this worked good, uh, we kind of hit a flaw where once we depleted our um, fuel, we ended up kind of fill in one with uh, 93 and one with E85. And then eventually we actually stopped and bought a third jug. Um, I think it's kind of critical to have an empty jug with you so that way you can uh, drain your fuel if you needed or just have the extra one there. Um, one downside to this front, obviously it was only good for two jugs. When we did the third, we had to kind of ghetto rig it and uh, bend some of this metal here. So we might uh, kind of rethink how that is set up. Um, which shouldn't be too hard to do. Moving to the back, um, we made these wheel mounts. I can uh, post a picture in here, but essentially the the, uh, the track wheels would bolt to the two studs, and then uh, obviously we would swap them at the track. Um, I used some hand-cooked tires, which I can kind of review in another video, uh, 275, 60, 15s. They rode really well. Um, they preserved my drag radials, so uh, that was good. One thing that I would do differently, so we uh, we scrambled and did this about a week uh, before the event. Um, while it worked, I was fairly concerned that this may fail during the uh, driving portion. In the Midwest, there was lots and lots of uh, bumpy roads, and luckily it survived. Um, if you look on the inside here, the actual top bar goes all the way through. Um, so that added some rigidity there, but um, Definitely think that this could have been reinforced a little bit better, but it was a uh, kind of an afterthought. Originally, we were going to put the wheels on the top of the trailer, but then uh, you know we wanted to have the option of mounting the hood. As far as the structure, it's mostly um, one and a half inch angle iron, or not iron, but steel, um, eighth inch thick. You kind of see the framing here. The sides is actually galvanized um, sheeting, which I think is commonly used for like. Uh, maybe roofing of some sort. It was lightweight material. Um, it got the job done and it kept everything fairly dry. It rained really bad for us at Byron. Um, I was gonna do 030 aluminum, but it was uh, a little bit more than I wanted to spend. So we made it work. Um, this topper is definitely something that we are probably gonna reconsider for future events. Um, if you can't see now, the, the wood is warping. It kind of warped um, each day. A little bit differently so that uh that's something that we definitely need to work on uh we ended up just ratchet strapping it shut uh between the days um, but we did have a lock on the back here so you know for overnight parking and whatnot we were able to kind of secure it a little bit better there as far as lighting i would definitely recommend have a lot of it um last day before we loaded up to go i realized so fox body mustangs have separate turn signals from their stoplights um, so when I wired in the standard five pin or four pin trailer connector, um, basically we had no turn signals. So, um, I had to add these two separate ones 
uh, right and left turn there. Um, I could show you on the car side. We had to pretty quickly add a second connector. So essentially the normal trailer plug does um, your stop and your running lights. And then these other two are directly tied to just the turn signals. Um, in the future, we probably will switch to a seven pin connector and just make it a little bit easier there. Other things that I would recommend, um, put lots of strap points. So I added these before we left um, to help strap the front uh, fuel jugs. But as we found during the week, as things changed, uh, we had the, had the need for some additional mounting uh, points. Luckily, we were able to use some of the holes in this channeling. Um, but definitely would have rather added a few more of those uh, mounting attachments on there. Um, with the wheels on the back, the nose of the trailer would get light. So that was why we put the fuel jugs in the front. But as we found, as we used up our reserve fuel, um, you know, weight distribution became an issue again. So at one point we had to put the generator on the front of the trailer and then mount the fuel jugs kind of in the back just uh, to get the weight right. So definitely something to consider um, is you know, being able to get your uh, tongue weight correct for your car. Another thing that we kind of noticed from talking to a lot of guys, we actually brought two spare tires. Um, I think that was critical if you're on the side of the road and you get a flat. Um, you know, a lot of the driving was in very rural areas. So um, I would highly recommend at least have one spare or some plan B for you. Um, as far as space, some stuff that we would probably do differently. Um, jack stands on our particular trailer could probably pretty easily mount above the wheels. Um, by doing that, we free up some of our container space. Um, we ended up doing some uh, combinations of tubs and uh, other stuff. It worked out pretty good. Um, we had, I'll go over it in another video, but a generator, a jack, uh, jack stands, parts, um, all sorts of stuff in there, a cooler. Um, so we kind of had to play Tetris each day. Uh, especially in the car, that's where all our soft items went. We camped a couple days, so we had tents in there, and then we had our clothes and stuff, and things for, uh, you know, things that didn't we wanted to have more secure, so those were in the car. Um, but the trailer worked out pretty good. Um, you know, definitely you gotta keep in mind your weight distribution. Um, I wouldn't take smooth roads for granted. Um, for us, uh, being in the Midwest, a lot of the driving was on some very bumpy roads. So I would recommend overbuilding everything versus underbuilding. Um, I know that some people had some failures in their trailers and hitches and stuff like that. So, you know, obviously you want to be safe. Um, I have a video on the building of our hitch, but this is basically our receiver. Um, we've gussets on the top and the bottom. Um, from the video, we actually cut this about five inches shorter to make it a little bit more rigid. Um, this worked out great. But um, one thing that I want to do differently for the future is have a dedicated hitch compared to doing it through the parachute mount in this way. Um, one thing I kind of overlooked was that in the um, mornings, if we stayed at a hotel, we had to drive to the track. So basically we get to the track, you'd have to pull this off, put this parachute back on, um, swap tires and a bunch of other stuff. And us being in the radio class, um, AB group, you know, some days basically you'd have maybe a half hour to get the car unloaded, get the trailer off, swap all the parts, and definitely having uh, the ability to leave the hitch on and just leave the parachute on would uh, would certainly make things a lot easier on us there. As far as lighting, everything was LED. Try to do that to keep the current draw low, uh, especially night driving. Um, you know, you have additional lights. Usually, uh, you know, you're having a little bit more electronic usage on the car, just being that it's not you know, typically driven, um, you know, with extra stuff connected. So we wanted to make sure that, you know, the, the draw on the alternator wasn't as bad. So the little rectangle lights, they came off Amazon. I could definitely put a link in the description. Same with the tail lights. Um, originally had incandescent bulbs. Um, I don't know if it would have made a huge difference as far as power draw, but definitely something to consider there. You know, but from what we saw, it seemed like the most efficient guys were the ones that had more car compartmentalized um, storage so you'd have kind of your day stuff in one area your night stuff in another area and kind of separate your track from your outside use uh, 
overall the event was a blast um, you know we really didn't have any major failures uh, we'll go over some of the stuff that happened in the car we did have a couple mishaps and stuff like that but um, biggest thing I could stress is safety overbuild everything um, think ahead definitely you know plan for the worst and then uh, you know, hopefully you'll have success like we did um, you know there's there's a lot of different angles to how you can go about it I think in some ways we overpacked um, in some ways you know we underpacked but um, you know we'll go over some of that in a different video though um, but as far as the trailer you know just try to think ahead think of what you might be using more frequently and uh, you know what what's more or less important and uh, try to plan for that you know packing is critical uh, I think we wasted a lot of time you know taking things out putting it back moving things around definitely could have been a little bit more efficient on that but you know overall we had plenty of time to uh, get the car ready we made our passes and uh, you know make it from our day to day so if anybody's have any questions feel free to ask if you want to see more make sure you subscribe um, like I said this will be a series of videos going over the event and uh, you know this trailer build was critical we couldn't have done it without it so um, you know definitely I would consider if you are doing an event like this if you have a you know quicker car with a lot of parts um, you know consider it and uh, figure out how you'd want to do it so anyways thanks for watching